Hi folks, so in this video what we're going to be doing is we're going to be modeling on SOLIDWORKS and the object we're going to be modeling is this light fitting structure here. It says here, as always read the information, a wall mounted light fitting is represented in 2D sketches and the 3D object below. Create a 3D model of the object in SOLIDWORKS to the dimensions provided. You will need to use the swept boss base command to create the arm of the object. Use your own dimensions for the screw holes and the arm. Use suitable commands and your own dimensions to create a lampshade for the light fitting. Okay, so we can see here we've obviously got the 3D object. This video is going to be done in two parts. In the first video, we're going to create this structure here, the wall mounted fixture, and we're going to create the arm. And then in the second video, we're going to create a separate light shade using our own dimensions that we will then attach onto it. Now, this video is going to be helpful because it's going to teach us how to use the swept boss base command, if I refer to it up here, okay? And we're also going to use our evolve. And then we're actually going to do it in two stages. The first stage we're actually going to do is a boss extrude. And this is going to take three steps. After we do this, we're going to delete it. And then we're going to do the revolve. And the reason being is because the revolve will only involve one step, okay? That is called economy of design. We're trying to model this object in the least amount of steps possible. Okay, nothing wrong with doing it this way. It's just it takes more stages to actually get to the end result. Now we're going to look at the actual object itself and we're going to focus on the boss extrude first of all. So for the boss extrude, what we're going to do is it's going to come in three parts. We've obviously got this first bit, the second bit and the third bit. And you can see here we've obviously got the elevation and the end elevation. For the end elevation, you can see each section is 12, 12 and 12. You can see the measurements here, here and here. Okay. So for every one of those then, obviously then we have a diameter of a circle. The diameter for the larger circle is 180, the next one is 150, and the final one is 120. Every one of those is going to be done on the front plane because this is the elevation. And we're going to do a circle, 180, extruded by 12. Then on top of that, we're going to do another circle, 150, extruded by 12. And likewise with this one, and extruded by 12. And then the very end result, we will fill at each edge then a radius of 12 millimeters. Okay, so that's what we're going to start with. Now in SOLIDWORKS, I've just previously modeled. I'm just going to open it up here. And you can see this structure here. Okay, if I roll back the bar here, and we start with the first stage, that's what we're going to start off by making. Then we will fillet it. Fillet is giving it a rounded edge. Then we will make the arm. Then we will make the socket. And then we will make the chamfer. Okay, and we'll come up with all of those measurements. So we're going to start off by doing that, so I won't save that. So in SOLIDWORKS, actually, even before I get you to do that, wherever, you save in your, wherever you're saving your work, you're gonna create a folder in here that says light fitting. So right click in the space, folder, light fitting, and OCD, there we go, light fitting. And then I make for this object, I'm gonna save it in there, into that folder. Now, on my SOLIDWORKS screen, I'm going to go File, New, Part, and click OK. So on my front plane, I'm going to start off by modeling. So I'm going to select the front plane, Sketch. I'm going to go up to my Sketch Toolbar, or my Sketch Tab, select the circle, select the origin, drag out, click. I need to give that a dimension, Sketch, Smart Dimension, select the circumference of the circle, let go, obviously when you select it, you let go straight away, then drag out and click again. This is to be 180. And now what I want to do is I want to go to my features toolbar and extrude. And you can see there when I go to the extrude, I want to set that distance here to be 12. One, two, enter. Accept that with the green arrow. That's our first section done there. Now, with the front face, I want to draw on that face now. So select the face to sketch on and then select sketch. Once again, sketch toolbar circle from the origin circle sketch toolbar smart dimension all the way out here i want this to be 150. once again features extrude boss base i want it to be 12 it's already at 12. leave merge result on that's fine click the green arrow and there we go now the last one select the face to sketch on sketch sketch toolbar again circle you can see it's quite repetitive the only thing we have to do is just change the dimensions each time. This one is 120. And then finally, features, extrude box base, and 12. And there you go. Now at this stage, what you could do then is you would obviously come along, 
features, fill it, and then I could say the fill it there is 10 at the moment, I change that to 12, and I could then select this one, this one, and this one. And that will then fill it each one. I'll actually accept that just to show you. And there we go. That actually is the wall mounted fixture done. Now, as you can see in our design tree, that is after taking three steps, boss extrude one, two, and three. And then obviously the fillet technically is step four. But just to get those three sections, it took three steps, okay? We want to limit that to one step, if and when you can, and you can recognize that, it would be very good, obviously, if you're modeling. So I'm actually going to delete all of these now. I'm going to select Control CTRL, bottom left of your keyboard, and click on each individual one. Then right click on any one of them and select delete and click yes. It might leave you with the original sketch. Right click on that and also click delete and click yes. So we're back here now to obviously a blank screen. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do a revolve. Sorry, the lights just went out in the room. So to do a revolve, so we're far back down here. You can use a revolve and it's a very helpful tool when you obviously can recognize the geometry to create it. So, what I'm going to do here is I've done a little sketch, okay? This little sketch here. And you can see here I've done, I'm going to do it, RP stands for the right plane. I'm going to do from the origin, which will be starting right here, I'm going to do a vertical line going upwards, that is 90. A line going out, down, out, down, out, down here, and lined up back with the origin. The height is 90, the length is 36. Where do I get 36 from? I get 36 from adding 12, 12, and 12. So that's going to be 12 in there, 12 to the next section, and 12 to the last section. Then you might ask, where do I get 90 from? I get 90 from over here. 90 is half of 180. 75 is half of 150. And 60 is half of 120. If, and then I'm going to create all of those, that, those measurements on the right plane. And this line here is going to be my axis. And that's the one we're going to revolve around. We have covered or evolved in a previous video, so you should be quite familiar with that. But it was simply a case of just recognizing, you'll actually see here, if I follow this little sketch here, I'm going to use my marker now, from the middle, that's essentially what I'm trying to create. Now, I'm going to start by doing square lines, and then I'm going to fill it afterwards. Okay, so that's the sketch we're going to do. So, on my right plane, I'm going to select right plane and sketch. I'm going to go to my sketch tab bar, select the line, I'm going to zoom in now on the origin, click on the origin, drag up, I want to go out, down, out, down, out, and down to map up with the origin or link up with the origin and bring it home. So there's our object. I'm now going to go to my sketch toolbar and select smart dimension. I want the overall height to be 90. I want the overall width to be 36. Now you can see here, this one's gone a bit shorter. I'm going to set this one to be 12. And I'm also going to set this one to be 12. And by setting this one to 12, this one now will also be 12. There's no need to dimension that one. Reason being is because I've dimensioned this one. This point here is directly in line with this one. So by the process of maths, 12 plus 12 is 24. If you take 24 from 36, that means you have 12 left over. I now want the height from this line down to this line, so we select the line and then select the line between it to get the distance between the two. I want that to be 75, and once again, select the line, drag it down to select this line, I want this to be 60. And you'll notice then that our sketch is fully defined. Okay, always check that you're fully defined. Now that it is fully defined, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my features toolbar, select revolve boss base, okay, and the line I want to select is this line here, that's my axis line. If I revolve it around, you'll see it again here. There we go. This line right here, and I'll zoom out. So once I select this line, my axis of revolution, look what happens. There we go. We have the object created. The axis is fixed, and the actual profile or the sketch of it spins around. And I'm going to click on the green arrow to accept. And there we go. That is the object done. So as you can see here in our design tree, instead of doing, doing those three boss extrudes, I've done one revolve. As always, we'll rename our features. I'm going to call it Wall Mount Fixture. So that's the Wall Mount portion. Okay, now what I want to do next is I go to my Features, Fill it. 12 is already set because I used it previously. I'm going to click on this edge, 
this circumference and this one. And every one of them and accepted the green arrow. And there we go. That is the first portion of the object done. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create the sweep. So that can be done in multiple ways once again. Well, mainly a sweep way, but you can kind of go about the sketch in multiple ways. So I'll refer out to that to here now. So essentially what we have to do, it tells us actually up in the question to come up with our own dimensions for the arm. So I kind of have brief me uh, measurements put in here. Um, so this distance here I'm saying is going to be 15. So I'm actually going to start right here at this point. So I'll be drawing once again on the right plane. I'm going to do a straight line out 15, which I've done here. Okay. Then I'm going to do a semicircle, and then I'm going to do a straight line up. Okay, that is going up 15. And the diameter of the semicircle, sorry, I should say the radius, not the diameter. So that's R35. Okay, not the diameter. So 15 out, then I'm going to have a semicircle, okay, which is a radius of 35, diameter 70, I should say. And then go up from this point here, which would be in line with it. And I'll go up 15 as well. Because as you can see from here, if you look across, if I do a line across there, you can see it steps up a little bit above it. Okay, so that's what we're going to do there now. So back into my object, I want to draw on the right plane. So I select right plane and sketch. And then I'm going to go my sketch toolbar, line. And it's very important, I'm not doing on the origin now. I want to come right in here, zoom in so you can see it right there. That point right there, the little yellow node. Click on that, drag out, click. Now the next thing is, I want to do another center line. I'm actually just thinking, I won't, let me just look in here. I'll actually just do a circle. So I'll go to sketch toolbar, and I'll do a circle. Now I want my circle to be in line with this point here. So I'll drag it out, you can see I'm using the line as a guide. Anywhere about here, I want to do a circle, I'm gonna match it up with this point. And there we go. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab another line, and from the other side of the circle, at this little node here, make sure you're on the node, click and I'm going to do a line up. And press escape to deactivate. Now, what we're going to do is I'm actually going to use my trim tool. Sketch, trim entities, and I'm going to drag it through here. And you can see it's after getting rid of the top portion of the circle. Okay? The reason it didn't get rid of any more of it is because this line was connected onto this point, and this line here was connected on here. But as you can see, our sketch is not fully defined. It is This one is black, but the rest of it is blue. So I have to go sketch, smart dimension. I previously said this was going to be 15. Looking at it now, 15 is a little bit small. So I'm actually going to change that back to 20. Nice round numbers. I want the radius of this guy to be 35. Okay. And I want the height of this section to be 15. Okay. Now, it is still not fully defined. I'm assuming that is because I may have to reference this to the origin. Yes, there we go. And there we have it. Now, all I did there, and I'll redo that step just to show you. So this one here, I'll set to 15, sorry, it went back too far. The reason this section here is, is still blue is because I have to reference the center of the circle to the origin. So I go to my sketch toolbar, smart dimension, select the center of the circle, or the semicircle, I should say, select the origin, drag down, enter, accept the measurement the way it is. There we go, 91, perfect. Happy with that, we're fully defined. Now, that there is a sketch, and that's the path I wanted to follow. Actually, just looking now here, I can see that we actually have a curve there. So it probably makes more sense that I put in a little curve here as well. So I'm going to use a sketch fillet there. Now did I think of it? So in your sketch toolbar, you have a little option here called sketch fillet. I'm going to leave it at 10 and see what it looks like. And just click on the corner here and accept that. Now, that can be made smaller if I went down to 5. Notice how it changes as well. Absolutely fine. I'm going to leave it at 10, though. I think 10 is appropriate. And accept that with the green arrow. And there we go. Okay, so there's our sketch. And you can see the path that I want, obviously, the profile to follow. So accept that with the green arrow. And then also, de uh, sorry, you can deactivate your sketch or exit your sketch by selecting the blue icon up here. Notice how the sketch now is gone from black to blue. And I've got my sketch over here. If I wanted to go in and edit that, I could click on Sketch 5 and click on Edit Sketch, and it will bring me back into it. I don't want to edit it. I'm happy. So I'm going to rename that sketch now. So I'm going to click on it, press F2, and I'm going to call this Arm Path. And there's our sketch. Okay, it's renamed. 
Now, what I want to do essentially is, if you think of this like the old um, electric games where you might get a little shock, uh, you kind of see them at the fairgrounds. Imagine I have a circle over this and I want it to go along the path without touching the actual, imagine this kind of path there as a, a metal bar that I don't want to get a shock from. Okay, and I want to create a circle that's going to follow along that path but without touching it. So to do a circle on that path, I'm going to select this face and select sketch. I'm going to go to my sketch toolbar, select the circle, and on the origin, so very important, not up here, but on the origin, draw a circle, and I'm going to give that a smart dimension. I'm going to use 10 as my measurement. So there we go. And there you go, it's right in there. And if you imagine, as I said, that circle is going to go all the way along that path to create our profile. And in, um, in SOLIDWORKS, that's called a sweep. So once again, I'm going to exit my sketch. So deactivate my sketch. And it's called Sketch 6. I'm going to rename that F2. Click on it, F2. And I'm going to call it Arm Profile. Okay. Now that we've got the profile and we have the path we wanted to follow, I'm going to go to my features. And we're actually going to use a swept boss base command. So select this. Now, what it's going to ask me for here in this one, the first one here is it's asking you for the profile. And in the one down here, it's asking you for the path. Now, in the profile, I could select it here. So there's two ways you can select this. You could either come over here and select it. Literally, just click on the circle there, and that will get populated in here. Or you can go to your design tree, which is now out here, and I could just literally select it here as well, arm profile. Okay. The one I often use is maybe just a sketch. So I'm going to select this one here. And you can see it's after going in there as arm profile because that's what I called it. And now it's asking me for a path. And the path I want to select is this one here. And you can see there, but, but just selecting one part of it, it's after selecting the whole path the whole way along. And there we have it. That is our sweep. So just to recap that again. Features, swept boss base, it's going to ask you first of all for the path, or sorry, for the profile. So I selected that here. And then it's going to ask me for the path. And I then selected any part of this. I selected the first part, which is that bit in there. And there we go. And it seems to follow along the path. And once again, green arrow to accept. And there we have it. That there is the arm done. I'm not going to leave it as a sweep. I'm going to rename that F2. And I'm going to call it arm sweep. I will say sweep. Arm sweep. Okay, now the next bit we want to do, I refer back out here, we want to add on this little section up here. I've given a measurement there because it doesn't really tell us, I think it tells us chamfer 8 millimeters by 45, but I'm going to give it a height. You can see the diameter is 20, so I'm going to sketch on the top a circle diameter 20 and extrude it up, and then I'm going to add in a little chamfer then as well. Okay, I'm just kind of coming up. I know there's measurements there of 14, I'm kind of making up my own ones. So, from here, what I want to do is I'm going to start off by sketching on this face, that little blue face there. So select the face and select sketch. Looking down on top of it now, I'm going to get my sketch tool, circle from the center, do a circle out, make sure you're over the middle. I'm going to go smart dimension. I want this to be 20. Okay. The next thing I want to do now is I want to extrude that. So you can see it here. I'm just kind of rotating it around. I'm going to go Features, Extrude Boss Base, and I'm going to set it to 20 as well. And accept that with the green arrow. And there we go. There's that little portion there. Um, I'm going to give that a name as well. I'm going to call it um, Light Socket, because that's obviously where the light would maybe be attached in. And what I'm going to do now is, send me to save there, don't worry. I'm going to go up here to my Features toolbar. And if you remember previously we did a fillet here, we're now going to use a chamfer. So I'm going to use a chamfer now, and a chamfer is going to do an angled cut. You can see my distance there is 10 millimeters. Now, if I just refer out to the sheet, what I'm more concerned with is the angle. You can see the angle is 45 degrees. So if you come back in here in SOLIDWORKS, you can see my angle there for my chamfer is 45. This angle can be changed. Now, the measurement here can also be changed. I'm actually going to set it to, I'm just going to say set it to 2, just to show you what it'll look like. Now, with a 2 millimeter chamfer at 45 degrees, when I select this edge right here, look what's after happening. Now, we want ours to actually be touching this guy here. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to look, if I change it to 3, it's after getting bigger again. If I change it to 4, it'll get bigger again. And it keeps going in. And eventually then, if I go, I might go 5. 5 is probably appropriate. 
And if I look at that and I accept it with the green arrow, there we go. There is our uh, chamfer done, okay? And if you look at the actual object then, compared to what we were meant to create, it looks like pretty bang on. I kind of came up with my own little measurements here. So there we have it, guys. There is the um, wall, or sorry, the light fitting fixture of the first part. The only bit we have left to do, if you remember, it tells us to come up with our own measurements. I think it was for the screw holes, okay? So once again, we're gonna create a screw hole in line with the center, and we're actually going to mirror it over. So we'll do it on one side, and we'll mirror it over the right plane. So we're gonna sketch on this base. I'm gonna make a hole. Uh, I don't know exactly what size, and then I'm gonna champ for that hole as well. So, we want to do a hole on this face here. So select the face and select sketch. Now, in line with my origin, I'm going to do a circle. So you can see here, I'm going to drag, I'm going to hover over the origin and I'm just going to drag out. And you can see it gives me a little guide. I'm happy with that. I'm now going to draw a circle randomly out here. And there we go. I'm going to give that a dimension. I'm going to smart dimension that. I'm going to make it, I'm actually, that's looking a bit big. So I'm going to go with maybe eight. That's probably a little bit big still. Maybe go with a six. If I imagine what a real hole would be. So about six looks appropriate there. I now need to dimension from the origin to the center of the circle. So select the center, select the origin, drag down. I'm going to make that 30 millimeters away. Nice round number. And the only other thing we might have to do is we might have to put in a center line from the center to the origin. There we go. Now sometimes you can see there I just had to put in the center line. Okay. And it's after going fully defined. Now what I want to do is I want to cut through the whole thing. So features, extrude cut, and I'm going to say, instead of blind, I'm going to say true all. And that'll bring me out to the back of it. And accept that with the green arrow. And there you go. I've got the hole going through it. The only difference is I want to put a little chamfer on the inside. So we've used the chamfer features. Fill it, but select the down arrow and select chamfer. I, instead of five is far too large here, I might go with one to start off with, leave 45 degrees. You can see there, I've kind of got one. Look, we'll see what a two looks like. I might go 1.5 actually, somewhere in the middle. So 1.5. There we go. I think that's fairly appropriate. I'm going to accept that with the green arrow. And there we go. That looks like our screw. Okay. Looking at the hole there now, I still think it's, if I just go to the front view, if I revert that around, sorry. I should say the back view. That was the front. There we go. Looking at that, it looks slightly large. So let's say I wanted to edit the size of the hole. I could go back into my cut extrude, where the sketch was, I could click on sketch eight, edit sketch, and instead of six, I could change that maybe to a five. Happy with that. Exit your sketch, and it'll actually change. I think five is more appropriate, okay? So now, once again, just rename our feature. I'm going to click on it, F2, and I'm going to call it screw hole. And OCD. There we go. I won't rename the chamfer. That's absolutely fine. Now, instead of doing that on the opposite side, again, I'm going through the whole process. I'm just going to mirror that. So features, mirror. Now, mirror face plane is important. So I'm going to select, I think it's the right plane, not the front, not the top. I want the right plane because that's my axis going down the middle and I want to mirror it over to the other side. So my mirror face plane is correct. Now, features to mirror, I'm going to select screw hole and the chamfer and then click the green arrow to accept. And there we go. That is the object completed. So all I want to do now is I'm gonna add a little bit of a color and we're completed then. So right click anywhere in the object, I'm gonna go appearances. I'm gonna do the whole part the same color. I'm going to use a metal. So I'm going to metal, I'm just thinking here. You could do copper, it's your choice. I'm just going to go with brass and I'm gonna say, polish is a bit too bright. Brushed, I go to matte or satin. Yeah, I go to satin finish matte, satin finish there. Okay, whatever you want to do, obviously you can choose whatever's appropriate and whatever you like. Accept that with the green arrow. There is our object completed. Now what I want to do is I'm gonna to go to my file, save as, I'm gonna save that onto my desktop, look for it. Okay, these are previous ones I've done, into the correct folder. I have a light fitting one here. And what I'm going to do with it is, I'm going to call it wall mount fixture. So there's my wall mount fixture, and save that. And there it is, that is saved. 
So that's the first part of that um, exercise done, guys. In the second video, we're going to make a lampshade that's going to attach on on top of here. Okay, so I hope you found that helpful.